What's up guys, Chris Brown here, No Nonsense Know How, today with probably some nonsense. And let me just preface this video for you so you don't waste your time. I'm gonna start by giving you a tour of my coronavirus quarantine shelter, or actually it's just a Mueller thousand gallon bulk tank. Then we're gonna see if this little Suzuki King Quad can successfully tow this or push it onto an 18 foot car trailer of mine without breaking. Uh, it's not even sitting on it right now. It's actually sitting on blocks. So that's gonna be pretty sketchy. Might break my quad. Here's the trailer right here. It's gonna be going on. And then we're gonna see what kind of fuel mileage I get in my 96 Dodge Ram while towing the trailer combination, the, the tank and the trailer, about 400 miles up to Kingston, New York and back, obviously back with an empty trailer. Uh, she's got the Cummins 12 valve, six BT with a five speed and some very mild upgrades. To begin, the Mueller 1000 gallon double wall insulated milk tank. I picked this bulk tank up very cheap and let me give you a quick tour of it. I really hate to sell it, but the guy offered me $1,500 for it and $450 to deliver it up to New York and need some money right now, a little short on that, so I'm gonna do it. So a quick walk around tour, made in USA of 16 gauge 304 stainless. It's got a 1.5 inch outlet on it that I've welded a uh, one and a half inch NPT to, and a ball valve. This has a frame welded down onto the legs on the bottom of it. Normally it would just be the legs. And I have my jet ski trailer axle under it right now. Moving along, the front of it is where it used to have a refrigerator unit mounted, which has been removed and cut off of there. You can see where the, you, those lines went inside of it, and it has an evaporator coil inside of it. But yeah, let me show you the inside, and that should wrap up the tour of this thing. You might be asking me why I actually bought this thing, and it was because uh, I was going to use it for diesel storage or water storage, but really I got it at a price that was below its scrap value, so I just couldn't say no. Plenty of room to slide in this 18 inch manhole. And then inside, I tell you, this is just an awesome little chill spot bunker. I mean, it's comfy, can lay down in here and kind of kills me to sell it. I was thinking about burying this thing. I don't know if you can still hear me right or not because of the gecko, but, but then I was reading that the, the 304 stainless will usually pit, they'll have localized pitting and perforation if you bury it underground, usually within like 10 years or so. Uh, let's get this sucker loaded up now and see if my king quad can do the job. These king quads, I tell you, if you ever want a cheap, reliable, tough quad, the Suzuki king quad, the original, it's got a five-speed semi-automatic, it's got a three-range transmission, super low, low, high, it's got two-wheel, four-wheel, and front differential lock on it. It's got uh, the reverse levers up here. Like these things are just so bulletproof tough. I only paid 500 bucks for this thing like probably 15 years ago. And it's just been such a reliable, tough, awesome quad that I've severely neglected and it just continues to go. You can see, I don't even keep a battery in this thing. I just keep uh, one of those large plugs on it. And then with my jump pack here, I'll just use this jump pack for starting numerous vehicles and instead of just having to replace batteries all the time. So uh, yeah, let's see how she does getting it on the trailer. Almost there. The problem is when I'm on this quad, I can't see anything at all behind me. And, and that makes it a little bit difficult. I couldn't tell how far back to go. And, and then I went to get off the quad and the one parking brake wasn't enough to hold it. So luckily I had this alligator clamp here. And the King Quad will live to work another day. She handled that no problem at all. Definitely gonna keep this piece of aluminum wire here wrapped on a bar for the future in case I ever have to lock out all four brakes like that. And now for the big question, what fuel mileage is my Cummins gonna get with the trailer and tank behind it? Okay, just filled up at pump six at the Wawa here. And the way I'm doing this is filling it to the tippy top till it clicks, then I'm letting the foam settle, topping it off again, letting the foam settle again, and then bringing the fuel all the way up so that it's about six inches down the filler neck. And so we know that the foam is not gonna throw off our calculations, you know, cause the diesel fuel likes to foam a bunch in there. Anyway, let's hit the road.
So that was a little bit ugly getting it off. I don't think this Ford 770B loader would have uh, had the capacity to lift that straight up off there. All right, not so great this time around. Did 354 total indicated miles, which after GPS correction comes out to 373.82. We took 27.85 gallons of diesel to bring her right back up to the top of the neck there, about six inches down. And that leaves us with 13.42 miles to gallon. Definitely not as good when it's empty uh, and, and driving conservatively. I was averaging, like I said, around 70, 75. And uh, yeah, not terrible though. My Tundra would probably be more like 10 miles to the gallon with the, with the V6 in that. And that'll put a wrap on this video. Decided to catch the sunset up on my favorite bridge up here. And uh, it's just a beautiful day out. Oh. Yeah, that camera angle didn't work out too good, did it? <laughs> anyway, till next time, Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how. See you in the next one.